Hey guys, it's Shubhu. I know this video should have been uploaded yesterday, but I'm just shooting today. Anyway, uh, so uh, today we are going to learn the glow effect. That is, how do you make certain objects glow on Photoshop? Remember, if you like this video, please share it with your friends, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe, share it with your friends, and let's go to the screen. To see how the glow effect is done. Hmm. So uh, we are here at our computer screen, and uh, this is the image that we are going for, and this is the one that we'll be doing. This is not my image; uh, I have downloaded it from Splash. Link will be in the description, so please check it out. And so, the first thing we are going to do is uh, cut this uh, gear out now. If you are going to ask me as to why I am not duplicating the layer, there are reasons. So anyway, achha, let's duplicate the layer. Let's go control K. Let's duplicate the layer, remove this. Now we are going to add one. First things first, we will cut this uh, deer out of the thing. So let's select the deer. So let's go. Uh, select. You know what? Let's not do it this way. Let's find a different way. So, we have this. We are going to uh, make the background disappear for some time. Take the magic eraser tool and delete the entire sky. That will be a much better way of separating the gear. Because it's having a hard time selecting the antlers from the background. I don't know why. Do this. Everything is selected. Cut out. Now, we are just going to uh, select the deer now that the background is over. No, 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 no. Now that the background is gone, I don't think there will be a need for, you know, there will be any problems selecting the deer. So, we're going to go here and uh, expand this and select this uh, elk. Is this a deer or an elk? Uh, let me know in the comments. Is this a deer or is this an elk? Anyway, so the animal is selected. We are going to cut and paste it to a little Control Shift J is the command, and we don't need it anymore. So this is the part that we'll be working with. And now we will uh, separate the horns. Use the same selection tool. Just select the horns. Just the horns, you don't want anything else. And make sure the horns are properly selected, there's nothing that you don't want in there. So we are going in control of okay. the match. Control selection. Add it again. So make sure that everything is selected. Should we just work the old on? Okay. I thought we just deleted a bit, so let's do the selection again. Just 
just the horns, the antlers, whatever you want to call it. They're not horns, they're antlers. Anyway, those hold all. Control shape J and we are looking at the layer. Okay, now that everything is done, this layer is not needed anymore. And I think I can delete this part as well because it is not needed. It is a tool. Select this layer, increase the size. You are not needed anymore. Anyway, with this thing done and the selection is complete. Do it. So, first thing, we are going to use uh, adjustment layer because this is what we are trying to do. Why are we separating these things, three things into three different layers? Number one, uh, when you are doing this, what you are trying to do is essentially add three different adjustments to the three different areas. The background, which is the normal layer, you are trying to make it darker so that it glows. The, uh, the horns, you are not trying to make them glow and the animal actual, the, uh, the animal that has the antler, you want some reflection of the light on the animal. So this is why you need three different, you need to cut it out into three different things. Now that we have cut it out, now the adjustment begins. We are going to take the background layer and we are going to put uh, adjustment layer and that is the color lookup. This is a thing, we are going to hit load 3D LUT and we are going to go to Moonlight 3DL and this is how your image is going to look like. Pretty good, right? Okay. Now we are going to go to this layer and then hit another adjustment layer and we are going to go to let's say curves and Okay. So uh, let me explain this part first. So uh, what are we trying to do here? Uh, we have already uh, added the LUT to the background, which makes it darker, make it looks like night, nice. and we are adding a little bit of contrast with the help of curves to the actual animal because we want to make it a bit you know differentiate between the lights and the shadows which will be helpful when you have a really small source of light like a glowing torch the shadows and the highlights are very distinct and very different which is what it is but the grasses near the foot have also become very dark so you're going to hold on and as soon as this icon appears you're going to click it to clip this curves layer to this uh, to this layer we just had but now we have this thing and this is how we are going to make it glow so first we are going to copy this layer control J and we are going to go for uh, Indian Dodge add to get that thing oh will you look at that uh, let's uh, hide the background for a moment let's take this layer and see See, there are some specs here and there, so make sure that when you are working with, okay. Now, if this happens, all you have to do is just take this and put it back up against this thing, and it will just go back. Okay, this is not this layer. Which layer is it? Okay. Remember, selection is important. As you can see, sometimes getting the selection right is very difficult. Anyway, 
we have copied these layers and we are going to go to linear dodge add that's the blend mode and this will turn your mods into looking like this now I am going to come up with the different blend modes very soon anyway so um, then we are going to blur it so the first thing we need to do is turn into a smart object why a smart object because we want our changes to remain editable so we are going to go to Oh, so we're going to go right click and uh, okay, let's say rasterize there and we're going to hit right click and we're going to see convert to smart object. Click this and this icon will appear. So let's go to filter and blur and Gaussian blur. So for our first layer, we're going to keep it around 3 and 4. Okay. Second layer, I'm going to go the same thing, convert to smart object, go to filter, blur, call blur. There it is. Let's just zoom in. Let's yes. We're going to make it around uh, 15. Let's make it 20. Okay. That's the second copy. Copy this again, control J. I know it's a bit boring, but it is what it is. Let's make it uh, 144. And for our last, just to give that glowy effect, we're going to control J, hit this icon, go to Gaussian Blur, and just something absurd like 400. And as you can see, it's glowing already. But we want to add a little bit of color at that yellow glow. So, what we are going to do is uh, let's do something. Let's first group these layers so that it's easier to work with. And let's, uh, up. So, everything is grouped. Now everything is uh, closed. I'm going to make this, 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 and this. All these four are going to be grouped. So Control G is grouped, or you can also use this icon, the folder icon, to group the layers. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Good. That's good. I don't know how this blend mode became passed through, but anyway, we're going to go to adjustment layers and we are going to choose hue and saturation. Take this colorized box because you want to put a color onto it. But as you can see, as soon as I put the colorized stick, everything becomes red. So we're going to hold on, bring your mouse just between the lines, and you'll see this icon, click it, and it gets fit to the layer. Is the horn. So I have already tested it. So, uh, so uh, I just had a call. Anyway, so where were we? Uh, I was telling you about grouping these uh, the horn that we have blurred, and we take this hue saturation layer, and then we clip it so that the adjustments only apply to this group and not to the other layers under it. I have already tested this, so I am just going to put the values, but you can experiment. Remember, nothing is a 2 plus 2 fold in this field. So, we are going to make it uh, 49. Remember, I am doing this because I have already tested it through. Make this 80, make this uh, plus 12. Okay. So this is how it looks. You can choose whatever you want to do with it. So now the horns are done, but that's not it. You have a really dark environment and uh, there's this thing that is glowing. So this is the only source of light. You can't just have it going like this. So you will have to make it glow when uh, make the other parts of the animal glow too. So we're going to hold this, copy it under the curves. 
Now, as you can see, the entire uh, L is now yellow. Again, we don't want that. We only want the knife to be on parts of it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use a layer mask. So, as you can see, the mask is already here. We're going to hit Control I to invert the layer mask. Remember, it's black. Black hides white shows. So, we are going to take the brush and make sure your brush is soft round and increase the opacity to around 30%. Again, I am doing this because I have checked it and this works for this image. On a different image, your requirements will be different. So, yeah. Make it a little bit smaller and just paint over the areas that you want. Now, don't worry about painting over here. Remember, this uh, color is only uh, you know clipped to this layer, so nothing will spill out. So you can be a little bit messy. Okay. So let me just do that again. Okay. So when what happened? Yes. I think we'll have to do it again. So. Uh, use saturation, colorize, clip it. Okay, now we're gonna copy this under the curves. Just make a clip. We're going to invert the mask, control I, take the brush, lose the opacity, down the opacity, down the flow. Just a little bit of this area, very lightly. Okay, I'm going to paint over these areas as well. Just to make it a little bit lower. Now, don't worry if you spill over, this area is just flipped over, flipped to this layer. So, even if you do spill, nothing will show. But yeah, have at it. And this is it. Center of thing here. We have a gentle light from here. And you can leave it like this. Or I have a better suggestion. You see, this light is flowing on to the animal on the L. But it also should flow on to the other surrounding things. So what you can do is in the same exaggeration there. And remember, don't click on the mask because this is what I did last time a few minutes ago and you saw what happened, I can do it again. So, hold the ALT key, hold the hue saturation layer and just bring it over the background. Okay. Now, you are going to invert the mask. Then, you can just use your brush over this small areas that you see, that you can see have the light. So you can just paint over these little areas to make it feel like that the light from the horns is spinning over to these grass and these plants that are there. Right? So, that's it. How do you like it? Please let me know. And yes, I did mess up a little, but anyway, it happens. Remember, experimenting is important. Please try it on different images at different places and see what works for you. But here are the three things that you must remember. Number one, your surrounding or the main image must be darker to make the glow more effective. Number two, it is important that you make the horns lighter, so you can use the screen, the linear dodge, anything that comes under the light section of the blend modes. Number, but mostly linear dodge works. Number, there are many things I have lost contact. Another thing that you have to remember is you must blur the horns to get the glow effect, like it's radiating out, and you will also use the same color that you have used on the horns 
put on the actual buffalo or the elk that you are trying to paint and if you can put some light on the surroundings as well it makes it look more natural or authentic remember photoshop is not about going to extremes if it doesn't look natural if it doesn't look seamless it's not good try to make your edits as seamless and as authentic as possible with that said if you like the video please remember to drop a like subscribe share it with your friends and leave a comment below and about what you want to see next a lot of you are watching not leaving comments please leave a comment down below it helps a lot thank you so much i'll see you in the next one